General purpose robots are ideal for flexible automation tasks, including deburring. This Kawasaki demo shows how small six-axis arms can add value to processes in production and how much money and time it takes to deploy something like this. Part of every industrial robot is the control box. In factory environments where space is at a premium, reducing the footprint of any piece of equipment is valuable. We'll also take a look at this highly compact controller running this work cell. Uh, my name is Dan Hazley. I'm Director of Sales at Kawasaki Robotics. This is a deburring cell. So we're deburring the inside and the outside of a gear, and we're featuring two of our new robots called the RS-07. The RS-07 are uh, fastest in their class, and they also feature the smallest controller in their class. Uh, these robots are picking the uh, gears up and then presenting them to the uh, deburring uh, uh, spindles in the back. So when you have a compact uh, work cell and you want to have a smaller, picking up smaller space on your plant floor, this thing can be built in and, and uh, tucked into very small spaces in the work cell. So everything's built into this controller. All of the field bus uh, connectivity that you need is there. Uh, it can have built-in vision if you need it. This is an example of a pre-engineered cell. So if customers have a part that's similar to this, this thing can be configured uh, for some different size parts, but basically it can do the same uh, operation without a whole lot of custom engineering. Anywhere from uh, you know, uh, 20 to 25 weeks from design uh, to build and runoff and then installation. Well, you know, these robots uh, cost less than 30,000 a piece. The wholesale, uh, I think they're uh, between 150 and 250 thousand uh, dollars, depending on the options that you need. So, an options can include a vision system, uh, more um, intricate art locating, uh, you know, higher speed conveyors, conveyor tracking, all those types of things. Well, a lot of our customers try to achieve an ROI of less than one year. Uh, they're, they're considering uh, labor savings, but also in a tight labor market, just not having people uh, that they can hire to do these types of jobs. This kind of operation is actually going to eliminate a lot of uh, uh, wear and tear on, on human operators who are doing this uh, repetitive motion every day. So it's going to uh, increase the, the health and safety of, uh, you know, of their employees. Uh, so. Uh, you know, being high-speed robots, it's also going to help increase their throughput. So the robot is our RS-07. Uh, as I said before, this is our highest-speed robot, highest in its class. Uh, it's a brand-new robot for Kawasaki, a six-axis robot. Um, and uh, we've got the uh, rippers attached to it so I can pick up the bus. One of the things that we're utilizing here is a technology from Kawasaki which is anti-vibration. So anti-vibration allows the robot to uh, slow down to the pickup point, uh, but achieve that position very quickly without shaking. So when it's not shaking, it can actually pick up the part without having to wait for it to stop. This also helps with the life uh, cycle of the robot. Uh, this robot features a cantilever design on its upper arm, uh, which gives it an extended range and uh, maximum flexibility, uh, but also a very compact design. One more thing we can cover about this robot in particular are the internally plumbed uh, uh, airlines, the, the valve, and the signals. So, you know, I can point out that it's got a very nice, uh, clean dress up. We uh, uh, bring the, uh, the airlines and the signals out to the upper arm. So if you notice in this robot, the airlines are connected right to the uh, top of the arm, making a very clean dress. Everything else goes internal uh, to the robot. We're also putting valves on the airlines internal to the robot. They're built in. So you don't have to have a box sitting on top of your robot with those valves.